Coach Levy, David Murray from Gene Space 24-7. You repeatedly use the word out there, show. When you think of show in regards to college football, Mississippi State football, what are you implying? Excitement, you know, fun, energy, uh, passionate touchdowns, violent defense, and people that play with, uh, uh, with, a, with a ton of passion and a ton of toughness. And that's, you know, that, that, that's what I want our people to see on Saturdays. Zach, uh, Stefan Christian, Clary and Ledger. For you, when you're going through this process of the coaching search, what kind of stood out to you about uh, Coach Levy, and, and when did you kind of have the idea that that's the direction you wanted to go with? You, you clearly, I've known of Coach Levy for quite some time, and I think anybody in this business knows and sees uh, the type of person he is, the style of play he has, um, his ability to attract great people. Um, I think uh, when you have that kind of gravity around you, people take notice. Uh, so I think, you know, we visited with a handful of candidates and met with some great coaches. But, um, you know, throughout our process, it came back to Coach Levy was the right person to lead our program at this time and couldn't be more excited about where we're going. From a moment of clarity standpoint, say sometime in the, in the Saturday uh, time frame, uh, knew Coach Levy was our guy, and we're so excited to have him and his family here. Coach Levy, Paul Jones on three. Uh, just process may have already started, but when do you plan on reaching out to commitments and recruits in this class? Yeah, that that's going to – it actually started this morning and uh, will be nonstop for, for me tomorrow. Obviously, wanted to be able to, to have an opportunity to meet with the team last night uh, and had a bunch of player meetings today, but it, it's going to be immediate, uh, be a full day of it tomorrow and try to reach out to every one of those guys that – that are committed by end of the day tomorrow. So looking forward to, to connecting with them, connecting with their families, and talking about state and the direction we're going. Jeff, Justin Fromer, Jeans Page 24-7. I wanted to ask you about your year you spent at Southeastern. Obviously, yeah. that was your first off, uh, coordinator position. What did that do for you in terms of helping you develop as a play caller, as a coach, and help you rise through through the, you know, the ranks? Yeah, I, th I think what it did for me is it, it just uh, – I don't think brought me back down, but it gave me the opportunity to <clears throat> to see it at the purest level. Uh, these are those were young men that, and they were playing for one reason and one reason only. It's because they loved it, and it was a an incredible reminder for me that it's about the players. You know, it's it's about the locker room. It's about those guys again. Like I talked about outside, having this incredible college experience, and it looks a lot of different ways at a lot of different places. But I love the fact that. Uh, those young men were incredibly prideful and, and uh, thankful for their opportunity. And that's probably the thing that I, I saw there in the six months that I was in Polk County. Uh, Jeff, uh, John Sokoloff with WCBI, good to, uh, good to see you again. Um, you know, you've had a lot of success on the offensive side of the ball, especially these last uh, five years. But, you know, this is your first head coaching kind of opportunity. What makes you kind of confident that, you know, you thrive in a role like this? And, and how are you kind of – planning on adapting to a role like this? Yeah, I think the biggest thing, and I actually mentioned this outside, but it's not just about me. It's about the people that we bring in the building. We've got incredible leadership of people that I can lean on as we move through this thing to be able to go put together an, an elite staff. Uh, and I do plan on putting together a staff that has uh, incredible experience and, and knows exactly what it's supposed to look like in all three phases. And when we're going to be able to get the right people in the building is – um, you know, the timeline standpoint will be a little different depending on how a, a couple of things shake out. But, but very, very confident in the people that are going to be here and, and obviously very confident in, in my approach and leadership ability to, to get these guys to go where we want them to go. Uh, Steve Robertson with Gene Page. I have two questions, one for each of you. We'll start with, uh, with Zach. This process obviously was uh, a relatively new one for you as kind of being the head the lead dog, I guess, in this respect. What maybe did you learn about maybe yourself and your team as you navigated through this? Yeah, that's a good question, Steve. I think uh, anytime you go from a, a position of making recommendations versus decisions, I think there's a little difference there. But, you know, as we've said before, like I've just been blessed to be around some great leaders, some great uh, people in this business that have shown me uh, their processes, their ways to do things, and clearly you make your own spin on it. I also don't want to overcomplicate it. You know, one of the first things we did, I, I'm a, a, a visual kind of a name type person, so we named this Operation Magnolia Rise. So that was our hunt. We wanted to go hunt the next head football coach in Mississippi State. 
So you, you understand the, the responsibility, the weight of these processes, but you also want to have fun as you're going through the holidays and you're going through, there's so many other dynamics with it. Um, so, you know, again, felt full confident. And we've got a great team of people around it, around us. As I mentioned uh, earlier, we've got, you know, three of our deputy ADs that were really helpful in this process as far as screening, um, giving recommendations, giving their due diligence. And Joey Bailey, Terry Prentice, and Josh McCown were instrumental in helping um, throughout this. When you got great teams around you, uh, really helps make my job leading this program a lot easier. Coach Levy, uh, you, you never know who you're going to end up working for in this profession, but uh, you've been on the opposite sideline of a pretty important ball game around here. What, you know, what's it like if you're coaching against Mississippi State and now you're the coach at Mississippi State? Yeah, well, obviously I, I'm looking forward to, to continuing in, in the chair that I'm in. Uh, I do. I know the importance of that game after living it uh, for, for two years. Uh, but Incredibly excited. Uh, I understand how prideful the state is. I love the fact that our fan base um, wants that game is you know more more than any one of them. And you know I, I think you can tell how passionate Dr. Keenum is when he talks about being state champs. So again, sitting in this chair, I don't take it lightly. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. And people in this state are going to have a lot of fun with that game, and uh, I'm one of them. Hey, Jeff, Robbie Falk from 247 Sports. Uh, we, we know about what you can do on the offensive side of the ball now that you're leading your own program. What does the defensive coordinator or defensive staff look like for you? What are you looking for on that side of the ball? Yeah, I think it's incredibly important to have a guy come in here that's done it and lived it and has great experience. And, again, I'll continue to talk about wanting to hire guys that know what it's supposed to look like inside this league. Um, that's important. I, I do. I, I think this league is different than any others. And, and I want a guy that, that has had success and had a, a lot of different experiences being able to go put it together on that side of the ball. Hey, Coach Jack Byers from BulldogBlitz.com, Rivals. Uh, you made some comments earlier today just about, you know, just embracing NIL and the transfer portal. Can you just talk about your approach to that just dynamic of college football just in these last couple of years? Yeah, the biggest thing is just understanding that that's part of the game and that's, that's part of the game that we're coaching in, that we're playing in. So making sure that we're doing everything that we can, you know, on both sides of it to put ourselves in positions of success on Saturday. You know, whether it be NIL or whether it be the portal, both those things are in play. And so making sure we're doing a great job of adapting to both of those things uh, to create a roster that's going to give us chances to go win. And that, to me, that's my job. That's our job is uh, to build a roster that's got great competitive depth and great toughness. And, and through those two things, that's going to be part of it. Coach Brian Haydad, uh, Super Talk Mississippi. You made your name as, as a play caller uh, throughout the years. Are, are you planning to continue calling plays here at Mississippi State, or do you think you'll turn that over to an offensive coordinator? No, I, I will continue to call it. Uh, I think that's important for me as we get started in this thing, having one voice as, as we move forward, um, as we're putting together the staff, still having the ability to, to hire an offensive coordinator uh, from a title standpoint to, to be able to take some of the day-to-day -day, um, and, and be able to go – have uh, total control of some of the organizational things that go on with uh, whether it be practice or game planning so that I do have the ability to be a head coach. So uh, he'll be an incredible extension of me, one that I trust, one that understands the system and, and has lived in it for sure. Matt Wright. Hey, uh, Coach Levy, Bradley Davis with WAPT Sports in Jackson. Good to meet you. Um, so it seems like expectations are higher than ever for first-year head coaches. And Coach Matt Rule recently said that when you're taking a job, the expectations – should match the commitment. So I just wanted to ask you, what do you think the expectation should be here at MSU and what has been on the commitment side? Yeah, I don't, I don't know if I should talk about what the expectations should be outside the building. I know what the expectations are going to be for myself and, and the players in the locker room, and that's to be as good as we can possibly, as fast as we can possibly be. We are truly going to be in a race against ourselves to see how good we can get before the first time we walk out uh, into that stadium on a Saturday afternoon and what that looks like you know, we'll, we'll determine how much success we have through the season. But that, that to me is what it's all about is, you know, as simple as it may sound, finding ways to get better every single day uh, to give us a chance to be as good as we can possibly be week one is going to be our focus. And it, it will be process driven over and over and over, you know, and, 
as you get into it and you're into practice, if you don't like the result of how practice is going, it's probably because our process isn't right. So guys understanding that sooner than later, that's going to be important. Hey, Coach. Tanner Marler on three. Uh, you talked a little bit about what you've seen on the roster right now and that you like what you see. Is there anything in particular that stands out to you about what State currently has on the roster? Yeah, I, I think we've got some pieces in place. And as I get more familiar with it, these again, these next three days for me after everything is settled down a little bit before we're able to go hit the road will be really important from a just a, a knowledge standpoint of where our roster is at and being able to watch you know, specific personnel cut-ups of every single position group of every single player on our team that's played more than 10 snaps. Uh, so that that's what's going to happen over these next few days while getting on the phone with all of these recruits and understanding exactly where we're at with these guys and also while meeting with every single player on our team. You know, and, and right now the, the player meeting for me is, is not – it doesn't have anything to do with football. It's got all, everything to do with connection and those guys understanding, you know, what the vision of the program is, how we're going to operate, and them understanding that they've, they've got a head coach that's going to have, you know, their back and it's going to support them as they're, they're on their journey. Coach Patrick Talbot, WTOK in Meridian. Uh, just a quick question. You know, coaches grow up in the game. They grow up under mentors and stuff like that. You've obviously had a ton of mentors, Brent Venables, uh, Lane Kiffin. Just kind of talk about what are you going to take from some of those mentors as you step into this new role here in state? Yeah, being able to take a, a little bit from everywhere I've been, you know, I, I think that's important. As, as I sit here today, there's been a ton of success. Obviously, uh, for me and for us personally, it's, it's been on the offensive side of the ball. Uh, been around some incredible offensive coaches uh, that have given me the opportunity to lead and to grow and, and to put myself in this position. I, I mentioned this earlier. You know, it, it truly is all about the players. I, I would have zero chances sitting here today if it were, weren't for some of the guys that you know I've had the opportunity to coach. And to me, it's just a great reminder for people to get the opportunity to sit in this chair to, to make sure we, we are thankful for and the ones that, that go out and do it and play the game every single Saturday. So uh, incredibly thankful for, for everybody that I've been around. So many have a, a, a big, big part in this. Um, you know, being back in my alma mater for the last two years obviously was important and, and, and special. And now, obviously, getting to sit in the seat that I'm sitting in right now is uh, is incredibly um, humbling. So excited about where we're at and where we're going. Gracie Barra, WCBI. Just, I have two questions for both of you, or a question for both of you, starting off with you, Coach Levy. What has this welcome been like over the last 24 hours for you and your family, just talking emotions? And yeah. then, Zach, you were not in this, you were in this um, chair kind of not even a year ago at this point making the same move from Norman to Starkville. What did you tell Coach Levy when you were talking about this move that this university in Starkville could do for him? Yeah, for me and my family, it's been, it has. It's, I've, I've said it a couple of times, but it's been humbling. Just the, the support and the energy and uh, the fan base has, has just been on fire, and I absolutely love that. And we talked a little bit earlier about taking advantage of how excited our group is right now and making sure we're doing everything we can as we push forward to, to capitalize on, on the momentum that we have uh, as we sit here right now. Zach, Zach gave me some great advice uh, last night, and he said, man, just take it all in. Enjoy it. You know, Never, ever, ever again will I have the opportunity to be a first-time head coach, uh, much less at a place like State. And so being here and being able to, to set up shop with my family and, and – and have great roots here is, is exciting for me, but it has been uh, it's been a lot of fun. It's been humbling, and I'm I'm incredibly excited. Yeah, Grace, I think uh, easy to easy to share all the great things that happen right here, and I think it starts with a great place to raise a family. Uh, we've got passionate fans, great student athletes. That's one of the things that I know uh, Jeff and I talked about is when you get here, you realize how good our student athletes are, how hungry they are to get better. We've got a, a world-class staff, and that's always helpful. And then clearly having the alignment. For us to do, be successful in anything, you've got to have that alignment. Um, great food. Like, there's a lot of good food here. Uh, great people. So I think uh, once you start talking about Starkville, Mississippi, you don't have to sell it because it is what it is. The facts speak for themselves. It's a great place to live, great place to uh, raise a family, and great place to, uh, uh, to coach at. And for me, I'm just overjoyed to be able to get to work here every day. 
Coach, uh, how you doing? I'm Rian Young from 24-7 James Page. Uh, we, we know that you're a great offensive mind, and we know that be, one of the first leaders that you need on the team has to be the quarterback. How you ha do you have any thoughts on that or the style of quarterback that you're looking for? Yes, as we work through this, we'll, we'll be able to go get, uh, you know, a, a guy that we need. I think we're going to address that position, obviously, um, through, through the portal. We also have got a couple of guys on campus that I am incredibly excited about. Uh, to be able to put us in a position to go compete and have a healthy competition uh, this spring, that, that's important. But, you know, as we move forward we, from a quarterback position, we, we want guys that can do both, be able to keep people honest with their feet and be able to throw it all over the yard. So that's, uh, that's who we're going to be. That's who we're going to recruit to. And, and, again, from a system standpoint, you know, I, I got a good film. We're going to be able to get who we need to get. Coach uh, Steve Robertson again. Where are you right now from a staffing standpoint? I know it's really just day one, but uh, I know you probably had some people you spoke to before you came in, and you know, what can you share with us about that? Feel feel good about where we're at. You know, as these next couple of days play out, there'll, there'll be some guys that get added to it. Um, and I've been incredibly excited with how many people uh, of great quality want to be a part of, of our staff, of this staff. and and understand what the work environment's going to be about, understand uh, what the leadership's going to be about, and understand that we're going to put players first. And so there's a lot of people uh, that are raising their hand right now, which I'm incredibly thankful for, and, and it gives me great peace and great clarity that we're going to be able to put together an elite staff to be able to go do what we want to do. Coach Stefan Kreshing again with the Clarion Ledger. You talked about, you know, out there with Dr. Keno about the expanded playoff at Mississippi State. You know, getting a chance to, to be in that. Why do you feel this is a program at, at this point that can you know compete for a spot in that and, and compete you know for higher aspirations than before? Yeah, I, I think as as we move forward, just understanding, man, one how we're going to play offense. You know, I, I think that's a big part of it. Being able to score the way we're going to be able to score, and, and the next part of it, it to me is that there's great history of great players here you can get not good but great players here to be able to go get it done. And it's happened before. Dr. Keenum talked a little bit about that, being in the SEC championship game. Um, so for me, it's, it's very real to be able to get that done. Um, and again, it's all about building the thing the right way, uh, creating great competitive depth from a roster standpoint, continuing to, to find the right pieces from a staffing standpoint, which we will. Um, but it, but it's a real thing to, to be able to have that kind of success right here. Patrick Talbot with WTOK again. This question is for both of you. This seems like a match made in heaven, given your history. Uh, you were there at Oklahoma when he was brought on to Brent Venables' staff. Just kind of talk about, for both of you, why was this such a good fit for both of you? I'll, I'll start and say probably haven't looked at it from, uh, you know, clearly it helps when you have a, a I have an understanding of Coach Levy and a trust uh, in what he can do because I've, I've seen it, I've observed it. But I think for both of us, it's a great fit because of Mississippi State and the resources, the ingredients, everything that we have here that you know, like uh, this doesn't work everywhere, but it works at specifically at Mississippi State. And so that's what I'm so excited about. It just so happened as you're, you know, you're looking for the next leader of this program, it just so happened you have somebody that, again, you've observed, you've worked with, you understand. But I don't think it's more about – or it's about Jeff and I. I think it's all about, you know, what kind of environment we have at Mississippi State that makes it a, a great fit. For, for me, I, I wasn't the one doing the hiring, right? Um, so as I had the ability to, to look at it, I loved all the positives. I, I loved, obviously, the conference that we're able to be, be a part of and go play in. I love the fact that we've got great proximity to players. Uh, I love the fact that there's great tradition and there's incredible support. But then for me, it did give me great clarity and peace to know that I was going to be able to go to work for someone that I care about and, and that I trust. And for me, that was, that was a huge deal. I was in an incredible situation, but this was an absolute no-brainer because of leadership and all the other things that, that I mentioned. So uh, just, just excited uh, to, to be able to get it going. Coach, David Edelstein, David Edelstein from WJTV, the CBS station in Jackson. Um, you know, Mississippi State's been through a little bit of a change over the past year with another uh, head coach and changing yep. just kind of the systems. We all know that two years ago with Mike Leach, everything air raid is kind of the offense. Uh, what, what is it like uh, from your experience having gone through the programs yourself to uh, 
change uh, and implement your own systems into a team and actually get that to, to take hold? What is that process like? And maybe how do you expect it to be the same or different from other experiences you've had now as head coach here? Yeah, I, I think it all depends on what, what the roster is like and where it's at. Being able to have guys um, that are going to play in the fall, be a part of spring ball is going to be a huge deal. Uh, those 15 practices and being able to install the offense uh, is going to be a huge deal for us being able to get ready in the fall. So my hope is that there's a huge part of our roster that we're playing with in September that's here in January. And I think if we're able to get that accomplished, we'll be able to get off on the right foot. We'll make it even harder, obviously, if you get those guys here in June. But uh, we'll make it work if that's the case as well. I feel really good about, again, how we're going to go attack this thing and being able to get guys here in January so that you know we get off to a great start. Jeff, uh, I don't know if you've seen the tweets that uh, Lane Kiffin has sent your way, whether it was the quote tweet of um, you know the Photoshop head on um, his Photoshop head on someone carrying your Photoshop head like the father son or. And tweeting at you uh, another way, but uh, you know, getting the egg bowl rivalry and, and kind of hatred started early. I don't know if you've seen that. If you had any thoughts on that and what you kind of thought of uh, working with Lane and seeing him now on the other side of that rivalry, I've seen it through uh, text messages. I haven't actually seen it on Twitter. Believe it or not, I'm not incredibly surprised. <laughs> uh, and I got a feeling it's not going to be the last. <laughs> so, again, this is going to be fun. That one is going to be a lot of fun. And um, I, I just, I can't, I can't wait to get to work with our guys, create vision for them, uh, be able to cre create, uh, man, some steadiness and, and just talked about it, but these guys have been through a lot. And so being able to give them, man, a calm hand is going to be a lot of fun for, for us as a staff and, and these guys understanding that, man, they can come to us at any point in time and, and be able to share their experiences and understand that, Again, we've got their back. We're here for them, and we're, we're ready to go chase it together. Coach uh, Marcus Hunter, MSU Communications. Um, along those lines, uh, as far as your past with uh, the Ole Miss Rebels, uh, you come here to Starkville, you are immediately handed a cowbell. You get off the plane ringing a cowbell. You get on the stage ringing a cowbell. Your honest thoughts about the cowbell now <laughs> that you're the head coach of Mississippi State, knowing that you used to coach against Mississippi State. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a big fan of the cowbell. Uh, so the – Make, make no mistake about that. Um, I'm a big fan of Mississippi State. I'm a big fan of having the opportunity to go lead these guys every single day, man. And uh, couldn't, again, just I've said it over and over, but couldn't be more thankful, could not be more excited to be able to go chase this with, with everybody, you know, with our entire fan base, uh, with our locker room, with our leadership, with our entire staff. Again, we're, we're doing this together. And that, that's what is, again, so, so exciting for, for me. Jeff, we've talked a lot about you know what these players have gone through in the past you know twelve months or so. I guess what have you kind of gotten to learn about you know those that are still on the roster and kind of how they've you know, been resilient and overcome the things they have uh, in the past you know, twelve months or so. Yeah, I think it speaks to who they are. Uh, I think it speaks to some of the older guys in the locker room, uh, the way they played the last two weeks of the season, even with more change happening inside uh, their locker room and from a leadership standpoint. So, again, as I get to know these guys, I'm, I'm figuring out in a hurry that we've got good people in that locker room. We've got good kids and we've got guys that are serious about being really good. And, and that excites me to be able to uh, continue to motivate those guys every single day and to get the most out of them and, and have the chance to take them, you know, places that they can't take themselves. And that's, again, ultimately why they call us coach. So uh, excited about that. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everybody. Awesome. Thank you all. Appreciate it.